And that's the way we're kicking off Send It Sunday this week. The south of France, if you couldn't tell by the language. <laughs> and a nasty sandbank. <laughs> I mean, it's not a laughing matter. This can be super dangerous. Be careful, you guys out there. I keep getting sent these crazy freaking catapults going on, and it scares me. I laugh when I know the only thing what, what went wrong there was a broken bat, and that was the only thing that happened. Crazy when you look at it. <laughs> Shit. Uh, that was in the very spot of the Deffy Wind. And if you have been anywhere on the internet in the last couple of days, you will know the Deffy Wind 2023 has just finished. 1,400 competitors on the start line. That is insane. I think over 200 foils, about 1,200 thin, normal windsurfers. Windsurfing is alive and well. They scored three days of wind. I think today, Sunday, they didn't race. So Nico Goya on the foil was the winner, the beast. Johan So in second place and Thomas Goya, Nico's brother, in third place. The Goya brothers loving the Daffy Wind all on the foil. It probably is the future of racing, especially when you have a little bit of an upwind. But the fins were there strong. Like I say, 1,200 of them. I think first fin, Johan Jules. Uh, I think Andrea Cookie and Tati Franz are also up there in the fin. Uh, in the women, Sarah Vinicus, I think, who took the victory because they're mixed in with all the men. And uh, another great result for Justine Lementier, fresh from her victory in Lake Garda. More on that in a second. But there you go. I mean, the Deffy wind when you see that start line absolutely amazing absolutely amazing unfortunately i couldn't go this year uh, but i had a few friends who went they sent me this picture <laughs> Yeah, the Deffy wind is not easy. If you are not used to it, if you've got office hands, office feet, and you think, I'm just going to rock up and do 40k a race for, what, five, six races, it's going to take its toll. And sometimes even the practice before the main event can knacker you out. I had another mate who went, you know what? I was knackered before we even started. Did one race, was kind of like, yeah, I tick that box. Maybe next year I'll do a little bit more build-up. So there you go. That's the Deffy Deffy wind. Um, I think I'm definitely going to have to make sure I go next year. Everything is going to be clean. Hopefully everything is fine for that. Um, obviously, Lake Garda has happened since the last time we did Ascend It Sunday. Amazing event. Came right down to the last day. Fortunately, I haven't seen an end of, end of event video yet, so I'm still waiting for that. But it was epic like to finish the event like that it all came down to the last races in the women uh well justine lemon yes she absolutely destroyed the women's fleet i think she won every race apart from one where she was over the line early so she destroyed it uh blanca alabao came back in like the last race to take second place and steal it off uh, marion mortifon uh, and van der veen actually who's leading the competition going into the last day dropped back so unfortunate for her but a really good result in the men it it was crazy. We saw the rise of 17 year olds. Yes, look at this fella. Will McMillan absolutely flying on the challenger stuff. Had to borrow a board off Patrick or team rider Alexander Cousin when his got damaged, his starboard got damaged. Uh, Alexander Cousin was leading going into the last day. It was like going into the last race. I think uh, Enrico Marotti could have came second in the whole event and he was leading. If he'd have just won it, he fell off on one of the jive marks, ended up 7th or 8th and that put him 7th or 8th overall. It was that close. Um, in the end, though, guess who won? Maciek Rokoski, yeah, the reigning world champion. I mean, that is some pressure. He had a, a sports psychologist with him. He had a caddy with him. He built the pressure up. He's, you know, obviously won the world title the year before and he held it together and put in some consistent results and took it down. Uh, second place, 
Pierre Mortefon coming back in the last race to take second place. Like for me, I didn't see that happening. He almost came out of nowhere, but he won the last race and that put him up into second overall. Actually level on points with Will McMillan in his first, well, in his second ever PWA event. Um, and went on count back of number of results. So, I mean, take a look at the results, but it is definitely set for an exciting racing season. Um, what is next? Well, on the wave calendar, we have got Fiji. Yes, there is quite a lot of hype about this event. They're talking about doing a proper live stream. I'm not going to be involved, which is a bit gutting, but I understand it's on the other side of the world. So hopefully they are going to pull this off. Uh, they've got some sort of sponsorship from Vodafone or something like that. As far as I know, I only know the loose terms, but if they get conditions, I am definitely going to be tuning in and you should too. But we did hear this news. Yes, Philip Costa broke his foot. He's been keeping it quiet a couple of weeks ago, landing a pretty flat 360 from what I'm told. He's in rehab. He's hopeful to get uh, it all sorted out and be over in Fiji for that competition. But could we see some, you know, not wild cards, but guys that we're not used to seeing up there? This is Fiji. This is down the line. It's totally different conditions. It's what you guys, we have all been asking for, a mixture of a tour. I mean, the riders are definitely having to pay the price. The organiser as well, because I've heard one of the major sponsors has pulled out or the government sponsor. So it is. I mean, it's a big deal, this event. There's a lot of ride notes, so I really hope they get the conditions and pull it off. Um, because, I mean, the last competition they had in Fiji that, you know, was very rememberable was the Nomotu one with that big video about it. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember that. Uh, anyway, that's it for the competition scene. It is definitely set. We've had freestyle comps going off, so it should be super fun. And obviously, Pozo in the summer. I'm going to be there early, bringing you the Pozo Training Diaries. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to be seeing some massive jumps. Yeah, I'm blooming hope I mean, Pozo always delivers. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, but now we're going to talk about some young guns. Yes, I had a couple of these emails quite a while ago. They've been sitting in the bank, but it's about time we brought them out. Just check out this young ripper. Yes, this is Isla, seven years old. She got a brand new Ezzy 1.5 for her birthday. This is her first couple of sessions. Mark, the proud dad. Yeah, proud dad. You've got to be a proud dad. You've got your daughter out there doing her first windsurfing lessons. But this has got to be one to watch for the future. So stay tuned for that. We've also just had this one sent me. Three years old. Yeah, this is Flo, and this is her first ever stand on a windsurfing board. Uh, Dad was in Vasiliki, and uh, he was going to, you know, the first sort of introduction. And she said, can I come, Dad, can I come? So she sat down, heard it all, and she goes, I want to go windsurfing. He was like, right, quickly, get the gear, get her out of there. <laughs> Three years old, she's standing on a board. Could this be, we could be looking back at this, what, 15 years? What, maybe even less than that, 10? 11 years, the way the young kids are going now. Could be up there, strutting her stuff on the PWA. Who knows, who knows? Uh, and bringing it on, strutting the stuff on the PWA. Check out this young ripper. Yeah, getting in some early education. <laughs> Yeah, she's doing the stretches. She's doing it right. Uh, and this is my daughter. Proud dad, proud dad. And everyone out there is going, oh, she shouldn't be watching TV at six months old. Shut up. <laughs> she's allowed to watch a little bit of windsurfing per day. That's just part of it. No longer than uh, 10 minutes. All right, all right. But yeah, Vianna, she's uh, storing it. You just wait and see. But we're not going to push her into it, no. <laughs> I'm gonna strap her to the boom. <laughs> uh, if you've got any videos, send it in. We want to see your fails, your bails. We want to see the moves that you've landed for the first time. We want to see your big jumps. We want to see anything. Maybe even your surf bargains. We've got some of them coming up. If you've got any of that, send it at windsurfing.tv. That's the email address, like a Dropbox, a wee transfer. I sometimes do miss them, but uh, stay with me. I will be there. Um, we've also got to thank the sponsors, SavanShop.com. Yes, they are still supporting Send It Sunday. And I will be talking about their rash vest very soon with the safety pocket, which has the transmitter in it. 
yes exactly like i say stay tuned to that right next up we're gonna look at faces yeah we've all got those weird faces when we windsurf i seem to have got this one now where and every video i've got on the gopro or the insta 360 my tongue is just sticking out but what we're talking about now is faces before impact yes check out this one yeah, this is James Thorpe over in uh, Durban on the east coast of South Africa. <laughs> Check out that face. Impending doom face. <laughs> yeah, it obviously goes down. But the mad thing is, just check out that boom. Yeah, I don't think it's going to live to fight another day, that one. You might have to get the hammer out, bang it back into place. But um, carbon booms these days are definitely the way to go if you can afford them. They ain't cheap, but they don't bend and they shouldn't break. I've had, uh, I've had so many, I've had carbon booms that last forever. Uh, let me know in the comments below, aluminium or carbon booms. Come on, I'm sure there's going to be some horror stories to brighten up my week. Um, what are we going to talk about now? Well, I think we've got to talk about this because it's kind of out of date now because there's probably no snow around. But just check out this. Yeah, this is Guy on the wind ski. I have never heard of wind skiing, but apparently it's a thing. Or has Guy just invented it? I've seen, the, you know, the sail added to the snowboard and all that jazz. I've never seen it on skis, but he actually makes it look pretty doable. I mean, I'm sure the wing is going to be taking over very soon, but... Um hat off mate hat, tip of the hat i should say to guy for just shoving that thing together and making it look pretty tasty if you haven't got any snow or the snow has kind of melted you can also bring out the trusty skateboard yeah claude up in quebec uh, has been throwing it down uh, literally check out that thing the boomerang I mean, I hope you've got not, I hope the boom isn't new, I should say. I bet that's not a carbon boom, that's for sure. I mean, it's pretty good rig control though. It definitely helps you sailing, although the concrete is harder than water. So be careful you don't fall off. But that wind skating can be pretty fun if you've got the right areas. I'm sure up in Quebec, it looks like they've got loads of area. Um, right, where are we going next? Come on, let's see it. Let's see. I think we've got to go to... Yes, the surf bargains are back. We got two beauties for you this week. And the first one is a proper surf bargain. Check out this thing. Yeah, this is a 1971 Mercedes 206 diesel. Um, and this is Jan. He bought this in 1997. He was living in it for a couple of years. He was cruising around to all the windsurfing spots. It was the bee's knees, he says. He's got the boards on the roof. What's he got on there? He's got the Tiger 254 and the Tiger 268 SLR. Ooh. I actually swapped one of those boards, which I won for a car. I think I've probably mentioned that before on the show, but it's kind of exciting. It was a big thing for me. I'm going to have to find the pictures out. Uh, but some tasty little Tigers on the roof there. Um, and he said he had that for a few years. He was loving it. But uh, after about four or five years, it started to go pretty rusty. And he thought, you know what? This thing needs a bit of an upgrade. Needs a paint job and he went to the local hip-hop artist graffiti artist and just said look do your magic <laughs> this is what they come up with yes what a beauty and that's how it stayed he said he was doing trips down to tree for 3000 k and the thing probably tipped the scales going down the hill with the wing mirrors in about 95 but usually like a steady 80 taking three days to get down there but then with the day he's living the dream he said he's still windsurfing today he's still got vans he's still got kit it's just all been upgraded just a little bit but love them love those pictures um the next one just check out this thing this has got some age on it i don't even know what this is answers in the comments below this is christopher uh and he said he's got two turbos on the roof whatever they are let me know in the comments below and a ghoulie a ghoulie a ghoulie board 1982 ish he says 
<laughs> he said he'd got a homemade roof rack. It had a swivel. He could fit like four boards on the roof. Living the dream. Said he started windsurfing 1979 and he's still going strong today and absolutely loving it. That's what I'm talking about. The windsurfing uh, community is hardcore. The ones that have been in it from the beginning or whatever you do. I don't know if that's the right side. Um, but there we go. Uh, just a massive thanks to everyone who's chipped in the beer money, keeping the channel going. Massive appreciation to you guys, uh, the new guys on the beer front. Um, but that is it. That is it. Uh, if you want to chip in some beer money, I'll leave the thing at the end. But until next time, no matter where you are in the world, don't forget to Sandy.